I am often asked how long I was in Auschwitz. My answer is, I do not know. But what I do know is that one minute in Auschwitz was like an entire day. A day was like a year, a month, an eternity. How many eternities can one person have in a single lifetime? I don't know the answer to that either. Sahor, pamiętaj, remember. This was the word my father frequently uttered to me during the Holocaust. Today, 70 years later, that command to remember is indeed superfluous. For me, a survivor of Auschwitz, to forget the horrific experiences enduring during the concentration camps, even for one moment, is impossible. Witnessing the atrocities committed at the entrance gate to Auschwitz was more than enough to keep me awake at night until the end of time. It is there that the Germans welcomed and began to brutalize their guests. Horses were driven into families and groups of people forcing them apart and separating them, often forever. As camp guards slashed us with whips that cut as sharply as finely swords. Even 70 years later, the daily cruelty and inhuman behavior in the camps is, is still indelibly etched in my mind. The look of pleasure on the murderous faces and their laughter as their tortured innocent men, women, and children is beyond description and lingers in my consciousness. How can one erase the sight of human skeletons, just skin and bones, but still alive? How can I ever forget the smell of burning flesh that permeated the air? Many of us came to Auschwitz not knowing each other in life, but most left together in death through the chimneys in the form of a white, blue smoke. The heartbreaking and weeping of the children torn from their mother's arms by the brutal action of their torturers will ring in my ears until I am laid to rest. I continue to wonder if the cries of these youngsters ever penetrated heaven's gate. We survivors continuous, continuously came face to face with death. Yet, despair was not our response. Despite hopelessness, we created life out of the world of darkness and we now remember the all-consuming evil we were forced to endure. We survivors cannot, dare not, to forget the millions who were murdered. For if we were to forget, the conscience of mankind would be buried alongside the victims. Today, in this place, 
we are part of the 70th anniversary commemorating the liberation of Auschwitz, held and under the auspices of the government of Poland. What a superb opportunity to extend a meaningful, heartful message to leaders of all nations to the world at large. We must all remember, for if you, the leaders in the world, will remember and to teach others to remember, then the Holocaust and other atrocities like Darfur, Biafra, Kosovo, as well as attacks as the present one in Paris will have no place on the face of the earth. But to remember is not enough. Deeds, deeds as well as those are crucial. It is our mutual obligation, that of survivors and that of national leaders, to install in current and future generation the understanding of what happens when virulent prejudice and hatred are allowed to flourish. We must all teach our children tolerance and understanding, both at home and in school, for tolerance cannot be assured. It must be told. We all must make clear that hate is never right, and love is never wrong. When I think of Holocaust, as I often do, there are but a few holy acts that I consider really holy, and which redeem my faith in mankind. Without hesitation, the courageous and heroic deeds of the non-Jews, those we call the righteous Gentiles who saved Jewish life during the Holocaust, fall into this category. To save innocent Jewish life, the righteous Gentiles engaged endanger their own life and often that of the family to save the life of a stranger. Righteous Gentiles, just a few against tens of millions, showed the world that the answer to tyranny and indifference is involvement and the courage to make moral choices and act in accordance with their choices. Their deeds should save as an example of what could have been done and as indictment what was not done and as a moral torch in a world of oppression in darkness. These rescuers, nobles by deed, but modest by character, taught us that even in the hell known as the Holocaust, the individual had a choice and the capacity to behave humanly if she or he only cared and had the courage to act accordingly. We survivors shared in a common goal with the current generation. 
and hopefully with all future generations. We do not want our past to be our children's future. If I really wanted to repeat it, but you interrupted it by the applause. But I will still repeat it. Because that's the key to my existence. We survivors do not want our best to be our children's future. I hope I hope and believe that this generation will build on mankind's great traditions tempered by understanding that these traditions must embrace pluralism and tolerance, decency and human rights for all people and must include opposition to anti-Semitism and to racism of any sort. It should be commonplace rather than exceptions. Unfortunately, the passage of time makes it more and more apparent that there is an effort by the ideological successors of the perpetrators, as well as the deniers and the ignorant, abetted by much of the media. I can repeat it, that it was abetted, it is abetted by much of the media. To sanitize, to sanitize the Shoah, they employ language to describe the Holocaust, so that it appears less wicked and brutal. Their efforts obscure the truth of what actually happened. For example, it has been become routine to use the word lost when we're referring to relatives and loved ones who were brutally murdered during the Holocaust. But the term lost does not accurately describe what happened. Lost referred to something that has been misplaced or has gone astray. 11 million people, including 6 million Jews and 1.5 and million Jewish children, were not lost or misplaced. These children were murdered as there were generations that would have followed them. Similarly, we often hear that the millions perished during the Holocaust. Let me make clear, those died in Auschwitz. They did not perish in the normal sense of the word. They were viciously killed, murdered, burned in the crematoria. For all intents and purposes, by not telling it as it actually was, clearly and without qualification or hedging, we offensively diminish our eight outrage that should exist. And in effect, we protect the perpetrators who per perform these reprehensible deeds. By using sanitized words, by cleaning up what happened, we unknowingly help the deniers. We hereby posthumously lessen the atrocities of the perpetrator. And yet, and yet in view of the current participation and awareness of so many world's leaders, there is a visible sign of compassion an improvement instead of indifference. This is progress. It is now up to the leaders of tomorrow, but there remains so much more to be done. 
We all must be involved and stay involved. No one, no one should ever be a spectator. I feel so strongly about this point that if I had the power, I would add an 11 commandment to the universally accepted 10 commandment. You should never, never be a bystander. Thus I hope against hope that there is a brighter future for mankind. After all, we live together on the same planet. Perhaps when we all finalize that we are one people, we can then make sure that tragedy like Auschwitz will never happen again to us or to any other people. I am going to end my remarks by quoting the writing of Primo Levi expressing his thought about Auschwitz. From whatever country you look at the ruins of the camp, think and do all you can so your pilgrimage will be not in vain as it was not in vain, our death. For you and your children, the ashes of Auschwitz are a warning. Exo that the terrible fruit of hatred, whose traces are visibly here, will never grow again a seed, neither tomorrow nor ever. Thank you.